Hi guys, welcome to our latest purchase. This is a uh, full refurb project that we've just bought. So let's go inside and I'll tell you all about it. Uh, if you stick with me until the end as well, I'm gonna tell you all the numbers because I know I keep forgetting and everybody keeps asking me. So uh, yeah, let's go and have a look inside. Okay, so this is a three bed semi probably built somewhere around the 1970s by the look of the, the architecture and the design. So it's a three bed semi, and I don't know why I'm whispering because I'm inside the house now. Uh, so uh, it's a three bed semi that we're gonna need to do a full refurb on. I mean, already, as you can see, we've got things like um, polystyrene ceiling tiles, which is highly flammable. You wouldn't really even want them in your own house if you were living there, let alone a rental or to sell on. So, um, polystyrene tiles, it needs complete decorating throughout. We've got some dark wood. We've got very old and dirty carpets. Um, we've also got a, we've got a radiator system that is powered. I was gonna call it central heating, but I don't even know if it can be called central heating, but we've basically got a heating system that is powered by a log or coal fire. So, that is the only source of heat. There's no gas in the property. Although I have knocked the neighbor's door and asked them, this is a semi-detached, so I have knocked the neighbor's door and asked them if they've got any gas and they said, yes, they have. So that tells me that there's gas in the street, but for whatever reason, the people decided not to have gas. So that is obviously a large expense, depending on whether there's gas from the street. If there's not any gas from the street, we're going to have to get, um, we're going to have to pay the gas board to put a new, a new feed into the property. So yeah, so as you can see, just looking around in initially, you know, it's it's very old and dated, and um, lots of old-fashioned panelling with dark colours and things, exposed brickwork, fire which clearly can't stay. It's okay as a log burner in itself, but we wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to power your central heating from a log fire. Imagine getting up in the morning. And just before you go to work, you've got to light the fire in order just to get a bit of, a bit of heat through the house um, with nothing else. So, yeah, you can see another right. So it's got the radiators, just needs the boiler. The boiler's no good unless we've got some gas. So, and again, in here, no carpet. You can see where, obviously, people have walked the main areas where it's, um, it's kind of bizarre because it's not even polished floorboards. Do you know what I mean? It's just bare floorboards. Um, so, yeah. I'm not going to open that and show you in there because I opened it earlier and it is putrid in there. There's all sorts of food in there and it's horrible and smells. So yeah, if you just look at the look at the quality of the walls and things and the just the color, it just these all just needs ripping out, as I would say. What we're going to do in here, as you've seen all my other videos, you know exactly the the drill boy now. So we're just going to strip it back, take all the wallpaper off, take the ceiling tiles off, units out. Uh, tiles, just rip it all out, yeah, and then we'll just start again. So we'll re skim it, replaster it, sorry, re skim it, redecorate it, put a new kitchen in. Um, we probably don't need any new skirt in our architrave, this is good enough. We'll just give it a bit of sand down and give it a bit of prime and then bring all that back to white colour. Um, they had animals before, so there's, there's um, lots of hairs all on the floor, it's, it's thick with um it's thick with some animal hair dog or a cat i'm not sure um two separate bathrooms split into two so we've got the, the bath and the sink there and then a separate toilet there we'll probably leave it like that um i don't mean leave it in the quality of that i mean that we'll leave it separated so we'll put a new bath bathroom suite in toilet sink and whatever else in here we've got so we've got an immersion, we've got a storage heater tank, sorry, we've got a, a water tank with an immersion heater on, which means that you can switch the electric on and heat the water up, so at least they haven't got to light the coal fire to get some hot water. Um, this is bedroom number two. You can even see like that there was some old electric heaters that you, some old heaters that this would have been in the bathroom and Years ago, you pull the you pull the uh, pull the cord, and then this glows red, and 
scares you to death because you think you might get electrocuted while you're getting out the bath. But so yeah, so um, cobwebs and everything. So yeah, not a lot to see, just rooms, but nevertheless, we'll take you around anyway. So that's the second room. And then we've got two further bedrooms. This one is probably the slightly larger of the two. So this would be bedroom number one, but you can see, you know, it's just, it's just horrible, yeah? Now, you might've seen some of my videos of the properties that we buy where we can rent them straight out or we can sell them. There's not a great deal wrong with them on some of them. So we can just flip them, maybe give it a bit of a decoration. This is not one of those. So I wouldn't be able to just sell this on. Well, I would, but I wouldn't make any money. So this is not one of the ones where we can just sell on. We've got to do a refurb on it. As I say, every ceiling in the, in the house has got this polystyrene on. So, so yeah, every room's going to need to be done. I'm not sure on the electrics yet, if you remember. What I say about the electrics is we need to take one of the switches off the wall or the, um, the sockets and have a look at the state of the cabling. I did see earlier downstairs that it has got a new fuse board, a new consumer unit in, or relatively new, so that... That's a good sign, that certainly doesn't need changing. It's just, if you look at the carpet there, it's just a bit of damp. We've got some mold and a bit of damp in the corner there, so we'll rectify that. Um, yeah. So, what else do we have? That's pretty much it. Three bedrooms, bathroom, a staircase. And uh, so, let's go and have a look down in the garden area. So what did we pay for this? Well, we paid 152,000. It's probably gonna cost 20 grand. So we got 20 grand to spend on it. That's without checking the electrics. So let's say we got 20 grand on it. So with costs and everything, let's say we're at 100 and 172, say we cost 100, and, call it 180. I'm hoping this will sell for 220 or at least be valued at 220. So when it's valued at 220, I've got a couple of options then. I can either sell it and make a lump sum of cash. So if you've been watching my videos, you know that I love the conveyor belt method. We drop a property on and at any one time, we've got multiple properties going along the conveyor belt like a factory and they drop off and ka-ching, lump sums of cash drop out. So we'll either conveyor belt this or depending on the market and the demand and the rental income potential, which I'll need to do my research on, then we'll refinance it and keep it. Now, you might say, well, why do you need to do your research, Nick? Surely you would have done that before. Yes, that is true. So I have a rough idea of what the rental income is going to be, but because I bought this with a view to making 30 or 40,000 pound profit, the rental income to me doesn't really matter because at the worst case, I'll sell it and get a lump sum of money. Best case, I'll refinance it get a smaller amount of money back out and then I'll rent it. Anyway, I was gonna show you the garden, wasn't I? So actually, I'm not sure what we ended up in here. Okay, so let's go and look at the garden. Uh, back door's locked, we can't get out there at the moment. We haven't got a key. So, um, so yeah, we've got a bit of tidying up to do out here. Just a few bit of weeds and um, put some new, some new lighting around and just tidy the place up. Um, bit of a shed with, I guess they use that for the, the log fire. And then we've got a rather overgrown garden, which needs tidying up really. But yeah, nice, uh, nice little garden. And um, the old coal bunker, what we got in here? Well, the big shed. So what, we, what do we do with sheds and outbuildings? If they're dilapidated, then we just take them down, skip them, or burn them on site. If we think we can make something good of them, and it'll just add a bit of, you know, just a bonus to selling the house, we'll just keep it. So in this instance, it looks okay, doesn't look that bad, so we probably won't go to the expense of taking it away. We'll probably keep this camera man, you need to reverse. Um, so that's it, there's not a lot else to tell you. Uh, I've told you the figures. Uh, showed you around. Um, what else do we need to? What else do we need to say? Um, I think that's it. So all that leaves me to say is, and you know the drill by now, is don't forget to like, 
subscribe and share. And also, a lot of you have asked me, Nick, how do you go from knowing nothing to earning a six-figure income from property? So I've put together a training video which explains, just in high level, I mean, what can I teach you in half an hour? Yeah, I can't teach you 21 years worth of knowledge. So it's only half an hour long, but it basically ex explains at a very high level what the steps are that you need to take in order to start from nothing, start thinking about what properties you need to get, and then go through that process of getting a small portfolio that can earn you six figures per year. The link should be somewhere below, or just send me an email. My email is in the About section. And it wouldn't be right without a video, would it, without the, uh, the phone going off. Um, so uh, yeah, I have no idea. It's a call from America. I have no idea who that is. Um, so yeah, like, subscribe, and share. Um, I'll drop the link to the training and um, see us in however many weeks for the next update on this one, guys. So uh, until next time, I'll see you then.